Let's worship this God. Say something to him. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Love upon God this morning. Is this the best you can do? Come on, come on to your Raise your worship. Raise your worship. Raise your worship to God. Him alone is worthy of a praise. Him alone is worthy to be praised. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be his righteousness. Worship this God. Him alone is worthy to be praised. Him alone is worthy. Glory to your name, O God. Father, we love you. We have come to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See you raise your worship to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God will touch us mightily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Testimony time. Testimony time. All right. If you have any testimony to the glory of the name of the Lord, can you just indicate by wave of hand? Okay, can you just move down the eye here? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. <sighs> your name and your testimony. Oh, my name is Abimbola Ruth Ayodili. First of all, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and that of my family. I'm shaking. <sighs> I'm here this morning to um, openly and publicly before the altar of God tell God I'm sorry. Um, I've sinned against him and I'm shaking. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, God. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to express it. So this is what happened. Um, two, weeks from, two weeks ago, I've been numb. I can't feel. Um, I forgot who I was. I felt I wanted more from life. I felt stuck. I felt I wasn't growing. I looked around me. I forgot everything I have. I forgot everything that God has done for me, and I was just numb. I wanted career growth. I wanted things. I, and I forgot everything God has just done for me. And I couldn't feel any other thing again. So I was just there. And I was praying one day. I remember when God told me that. Because <clears throat> the beginning of this year, I had like a prayer point I wrote. I thought God things I wanted him to do for me. And I was praying and God told me specifically and he said, Ruth, he said, remember the prayer you prayed to me beginning of this year? And I prayed it in my dialect. I said, Oluwa, this year, um, Lord, tell it to me. Let go before me before this year and make every crooked way straight. And God said, stop asking. Just thank me. That was about some months ago. So fast forward to last month, I forgot. Even last month, my business will launch something new. I'm, I'm doing well financially. I have a good career. I have a job. Last year, even I came to church. I don't know if you can remember. Where I said God gave me a job and... I was earning times three of what I was earning before. But I don't know what the devil was trying to just steal me. But I just couldn't feel. I didn't, I, I didn't come to church. I just felt numb. And I don't know if I'm the only one here. But today I'm here to say, God, thank you. Perfect. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Because God had to remind me. He said, Ruth, just thank me. Don't ask me for anything again. God, I'm sorry because I forgot who I was in Christ. I forgot everything you've done for me. I could have been dead. It could have been worse. But I'm here today to say, God, thank you. It's my testimony. Thank you for everything. I don't even want anything again. All I want to say is thank you for everything, for my job, for career, for business, for finances, for everything you've done to me. God, I'm grateful and I say thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the Lord, church. Okay, my name is Stanley. First and foremost, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. Then secondly, I want to thank God for blessing me with a new job this April. Hallelujah. Actually, it actually came double. I practically had to turn down one for the other. So this coming at this time was like a career leap for me because, you know, there's something these um, private uh, employees do employers, I beg your pardon. So come, when, you, when you're about joining them for the first time, they'll make the offer look so juicy. They will promise you a whole lot of on-the-job growth and all of that. So, so was it when I joined the company I'm just leaving. Praise the Lord. So was it when I joined the company I was just leaving. So, you know, 
it was so promising at first. But four years down the line, I didn't really see that commensurate growth as I was promised from the start, just like I was uh, kind of stagnated. So I know that wasn't, that wasn't really me. I, w I didn't want that for myself. So I needed to get something better. I needed to step up my game. So when we entered this uh, year 2023, 2024. You have 30 seconds. OK, because the previous years, I've actually attended to a whole lot of interviews, but eventually nothing come out. So when we entered this year, it was an uncommon, uh, the team was an uncommon encounter. In fact, I, I personalized it. I was so intentional about it, and I knew it can only be now. So in March, that was the month of uncommon ease. That was when I attended these two interviews, you know. Uh, earlier this year, sorry, I, I just had to say this. Earlier this year, when I wanted to make my vow, I've not done this in a while, so I had to make some level of commitment to it because I needed a change. And I know God was actually going to work out something good for me from there. So in the month of March, I attended these two interviews, and all of them, we both came out good with very nice offer, okay? So it's supposed to be a very good news for me, especially coming at this time. But then, as I was making uh, the arrangements, you know, to, hand, uh, to, you know, make my handover from my previous place of work, I really had that sensitivity in my spirit that, you know, something wanted to happen to make it look like the good news is kind of not going to be the way it should be. So my times got missing from my previous place of work. So, and, you know, the access level to that office wasn't really properly streamlined. We had a contractor that works with us who also shares the same office and all of that. So when the issue was reported, kind of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I really know I had to take a whole lot of time on it. So when the issue was reported, you know, it started, started following it up. So it was as if the fingers were trying to turn as if trying to point against me. But I, I had faith in God that God is actually the one that is Bring, that has started this good work for me from the start. And um, so along the line, you know, the great tempest that was like, it's really going to swallow me. God is really taking care of things for me. So I really appreciate God for what he's doing for me. And I know Hallelujah. he'll continually do more. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Mrs. Patrick Caroline. I want to thank God for what he has done because the joy that the Lord has given to me, the world cannot take it from me. I want to thank God because I got my feet back. And my feet is taking me to places by the special grace of God. Thank you, Lord God, for what he has done. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making it snapping. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. And okay, my name is Nsikan. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for the salvation of my soul. Today happens to be my birthday. And uh, when I um, look back, I can only say thank you, Jesus. I want to thank God for his faithfulness, for his promises, for his confidence. They stand the shore. Um, some months back I had um, a domestic accident I would have taken my life but God spared me and he gave me quick recovery and I'm here to say thank you Jesus praise the Lord praise the Lord Hallelujah. church praise master Jesus Hallelujah. I am here to testify the goodness of the Lord by special grace of God my name is sister Kechi I am here to testify the goodness of the Lord. My aim of coming out this morning, I don't know how to appreciate God in my life, in my own life. If you are a mother, you have children, everything, mommy, everything, mommy. I look back, I look front, I say, mommy, mommy, mommy. God is always there for me to help me, me and the children. And they are always there. And I really thank God, two of them, this month is their birthday. One celebrate yesterday, and in the next two, three days, I will celebrate my seven years' birthday, my baby and small baby. I just say, God, 
He has been doing this for me. He has been protecting me and the children. He has been guiding them. If you look at them, they, from year to year, they don't go to hospital. I don't have any special hospital. Just paracetamol, they will be healthy. Daddy Jesus, I said, thank you. I have nothing to offer you than to say you're worthy to be praised. Be that well sorted in the name of Jesus. Let's all this test fire rise up. Let's just, just thank God for these testimonies. Let's thank God for protection. Let's thank God for vindicating our brother. Let's thank God for lifting our sister up. Let's thank God for blessings, for health. For let's just give God all the glory. Let's thank God for making this um this church a church of testimonies. Let's thank God for coming through for us. And let's also pray and ask that those that are trusting God for one testimony or the other, the Lord will come through for them. That testimony will continue to abound in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can we put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? The I am that I am. The Ancient of Days. The Lily of the Valley. Rose of Sharon. The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Celebrate the King of Kings in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So this is just a timely reminder to define to remind you of who you are in Christ. So please listen and stay blessed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you are a living soul, you will rise up on your feet to shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, there is no longer Eden. I am the city of God. Tell your neighbor that one. I am the city of God. I am the city of God. I am the city of God. If your neighbor is not sure, move to another neighbor and tell the neighbor, I am the city of God. Shadows. As it was in the beginning, so let it be now. I am the city, the city of God. How many of you believe that? Let your living waters flow out of me. Let your Holy Spirit overshadow. You will stand with me. Hidden is no more a place. And I am the city of God. And I bring heaven, heaven here and now. Somebody open your mouth and speak in the storm. Hey! If you believe, if you believe, how oh God anointed Jesus Christ with power. And he waits about doing good. Let your living Let your Holy Spirit overshadow me. And as it was in the beginning, so let it be now. Can I hear you say, I am the city? I am the city. We're going to do it one more time, we'll say, Oh, let your living waters flow out of me. Can I hear the church sing? Let your Holy Spirit, you say,
There is no victory we can't win. There is no battle we can't oh God, overcome. We overcame, we are overcomers. Through Christ, we are overcomers. Thank you, Father.
you see the hand of the Lord descending upon your head? Can you see the hand of the Lord descending upon your head? Can you see the hand of the Lord descending upon your head? Can you see the hand of the Lord descending upon your head? Can you see the Lord running, running with you? Can you see the Lord carrying you up, lifting you up, and beginning to run with you? Ay, 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 now you are going to take it. You are going to be intentional. I said put your hands on your head as you take this song. Just put your hands, your right hand on your head. Whichever hand, you will sing it with all your heart. Why are we ready now? One to go. Oh, Gloria, We have come to draw, 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 draw you again, again. We have come to draw. 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 Draw again.
have come to trust them. We have come to draw as much as possible from your presence. Spirit of life. Holy Spirit of life, we have come to draw. Ah. I can see a car in the middle. I can see a lord in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. But do you know what? Anywhere life has located you, you are gaining on common speed. Where that life has relegated you to the middle of nowhere, God is giving you a common speed. You are coming to prominence. Spirit of life, please speak to us. Ah, thank you, Father. The presence of the Lord. I feel it. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Lord. It is time. Just move and let this be your service. The power of the Lord is here. Enrich every soul, Lord. Let us hear your word quickly and then take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we give Jesus a name? Come on, let's give the choir a bit and let's give them a bit. I didn't want to continue that way because if I do, we'll just send time to. Uh, amen. Tell your neighbor you're welcome. And make this declaration. Say, um, I'm excited to be in God's presence today. This is what God dropped in my heart when I was preparing for this message. So please say it after me. Say, I'm excited. I'm excited. Just look at your neighbor and say it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm excited, I'm excited. to be in God's presence today. Choir shouldn't be far, especially the keyboardists. We are, we are going to go into several things today. My expectations won't be denied. My expectations will not be cut off. I will have a supernatural encounter today. The unction of divine acceleration is my portion. The unction for a divine acceleration is my portion. Say it one more time. I'm excited to be in God's presence today. My expectations won't be denied. I will have a supernatural encounter. The unction for a divine acceleration is my portion. If you believe it, why not shout hallelujah? 
First Kings chapter number 18, verse number 46. First Kings 18, time is racing. I'm going to be a little bit fast. And then we'll enter into some worship. And let the Lord, nobody is going to touch you except the Lord asks me to touch you. Otherwise, it is the Lord himself. Let him have his way. Let him touch you. The way no man can touch you. Let him, let him touch you. So be prepared. Are you, can you hear me? Tell your neighbor, are you prepared? Are you ready for an encounter? Are you ready for a touch? All right. First Kings chapter number 18, verse number 46. The amplified version or the NIV, the amplified version of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Let's read together. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking his clerk into his bed, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. The Amplified Version, please. Do you have the Amplified Version? Otherwise, I'll read what I have here. Now, let's read together. The hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He gathered up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel, nearly 20 miles. The most important thing is the first, is the A part of that verse. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, giving him supernatural word strength. For somebody hearing the sound of my voice this morning, the hand of God is about to come upon you. Your amen is not convincing anyway, but I will continue because whether you like it or not, God's hand is coming upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, please note this. Your future is certain. Your tomorrow is certain. Your destiny is settled. Because God has settled all that concerns you. When he said in John chapter 19 verse 30, it is finished. Every hindrance is we are eliminated. For you to get to your destiny. He said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of good, not of evil. To give you a future and an ending. Your future is colorful. Your future is beautiful. Your future is, uh, is absolute. It's absolutely magnificent. It is elegant. But do you know what, beloved? Though this future is certain, when you arrive there, it's not up to God. It's up to you. The fact that your future is certain, the fact that your future is colorful, the fact that great things are ahead of you does not, does not confirm does not give an assurance that you will arrive there or you arrive there early. So when you arrive at that destination, when you arrive at that colorful future, it's up to you. It's not up to God. And because it is up to you, most of us have wasted so much time. God is giving us a second chance. Through the supernatural speed and auction for a supernatural acceleration to recover lost grounds, to recover lost opportunities, to recover lost blessings, to recover lost greatness, and above all, to recover lost positions. I don't know whether you believe it. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. You see, beloved, one of the ways, I'm trying to see if I can teach, though time is racing. One of the ways God transmits the auction or the anointing for supernatural speed is through his hands. When God holds you, when God's hand is upon you, there is a transmission of the grace. There is a transmission of the unction for common acceleration from God to you. So when God wants to transmit the unction for common acceleration to you, He lays His hands on you. His hands finds you. His hands discover you. His hands locate you. His hands rest upon you. And beloved, when God wants, when, when God's hand is upon a man, there is one place that that, God, that hand is. God's hand will be upon his head. And I want to tell you today, God's hands is about to rest upon your head. Ah, uh, you didn't get it. Your hand cannot carry God's, your, your head cannot carry God's hand. An enemy wants to put load. No enemy can put load on God's hands. No way, they can't. So brethren, does that mean when we say God's hand is upon you? It means divine empowerment. Listen, any man who has the opportunity 
for God to lay his hands or for God's hands to be upon him. Such a man starts operating with supernatural power and strength far beyond human comprehension. More than men can understand. More than men can, or can comprehend. They seem as a different species. Men begin to seem as operating in a different frequency, in a different wavelength. Listen to me. In the annals of life, among your colleagues, you will begin to operate in a different frequency. You will begin to operate in a different wavelength. In the name of Jesus, they will look at you. They cannot understand you. You know why? Because God's hand is upon you. Any man that has the opportunity to encounter God's hand upon his life, man will always bow before him. From today, any man that has relegated you, they will come bowing before you. In the name of Jesus, three people that had God's hands upon their lives and they did marvelous things that men could not comprehend. Elijah, where we read, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, he had run a chariot that should be ahead of him, that started ahead of him. He overtook the, char the chariot and he arrived at the destination just before the chariot. I have good news for somebody. You will arrive at your destination ahead of those that started before you. I so you will get there. You will get there. Do you know why you will get there? Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah is going with you. The Bible says, Jehovah Shammah. There is a song that says, Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Your glory fill the earth. Everlasting Father. Trust in you, please. Just, just stop. Don't worry. Don't continue. Jehovah Shammah, the God that is there. That is what that word means. The God that is always there. Because God is always there and He arrives the destination before you, you will always get to your destination. Oh no, you will never start a journey and stop halfway. You will never be missing in your destination. They won't look for you and not find you in your destination. Jehovah will be waiting for you there. Do you know why God is waiting for you? He is always waiting for you because he will know you will get there. The enemy will say you won't get there. But who is it that say it and it come to pass when God has not commanded it? And what has God commanded today? You will arrive safely at your destination. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Another person that did that God's hand was upon and it did marvelous things in the book of Judges chapter 14 verse 6. The Bible talked about Samson. That God's hand came upon Samson through his spirit. And Samson took a lion and he ran the lion like a goat, a small goat. You know, you know this little kid, you know a kid, right? When a goat gave birth, that very little one, the one that when they use it to make, uh, is he asu? It does not look strong. It doesn't look sweet because it's not strong enough, right? The Bible says, when Samson, when the lion rowed against Samson, he tore a lion as if he was dealing with a goat. Ah, God that made the lion like a goat. Every lion on your way of greatness, they will become like goats. You will tear them apart. The third person, quickly, before I go into most of the talk I want to give, before we begin to pray and worship, we are just going to worship and then we'll pray at some point. Just few prayers. We prayed during first service. So go online and begin to pray those prayers. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 36 and verse 50. The Bible talked about David, that David killed a lion with his hands. He killed a bear with his hand. And above all, he killed Goliath with his what? With a sling and with some stones. He did not have sword. Goliath came with sword. He came with shield. He came with everything for the battle. But David defeated him. Listen to me. I don't know. You don't have the qualification. You don't have everything that is required. I have good news for you. You will defeat those ahead of you. After all, somebody testified just last week. He said, all those who were ahead of me, my friends who I think we are more qualified, we all put him for a job. But do you know what? I was selected. And then when I was selected, I was given the job. They asked me, what salary do you want to earn? I told them the salary that I wanted. They didn't even argue with me. They gave me that salary. Listen to me. From today, your words will become law. Everything you want, you will get. In the name of Jesus. What is the effect of God's hands upon a man? What is the effect? 
When God's hand is upon you, what are the effects? Number one, the effect of God's hand is upon a man. The hand of God is an invisible force and a supernatural influencer or influence that enhances a man's speed in life and catapults him to the limelight. When God's hand is upon you, it is a supernatural propeller. Hello, I don't know if you can hear me. It just propels you. It magnifies every little thing you do. You make little effort, it amplifies it. Haven't you seen some people, they start a business just like every other person. Before you know it, they have 10 shops. They have 20 businesses. The business is just expanding. The business is just moving. Whereas people that started with them, they are still in one shop. They are moved to 20. God's hands. God's hands. When God is, is on your business, your business begins to multiply. It just begins to multiply without disintegrating. You have one, it turns to two. Two turns to four. Turns to eight. Eight turns to sixteen. Sixteen turns to what thirty was called to be a prophet. Why? God's hand was upon him. Listen, let me tell you. Everyone will know that you are called to be the MD. Ah, uh, You didn't hear me. Everyone will know that you are called to be the next in command. Why? Because when God's hand comes upon you, God's hand elevates you. God's hand separates you. God's hands move you higher. They see everybody, but they see you specially. They see everybody, your colleagues, those at your level, but when they see you, you are looked at specially. When God's hand is upon you, even when you are hidden, God's hand will elevate you. God's hand will discover you. God's hand will bring you up. In the name of Jesus, there is no time for a story. I would have told you a story regarding that. Number two, the hand of God is a supernatural strength from God that deactivates your weakness. God's hand is the supernatural strength from God that deactivates what? Your weaknesses. How do I mean? Listen to me. <laughs> what happens is this. God's hand switches off your weaknesses and connects you to God's word strengths. That's what God's hand does. He switches off your weaknesses. He turns off your weaknesses. Men want to see your weakness. They know you will soon fumble. They know you will soon fail. They know you will soon fall. They are waiting for you. But heaven will just switch it off. Automatically, we just switch on God's strength for you. Come on, let somebody shout hallelujah. God is about to switch off your weaknesses. He's about to switch off your failures. He's about to switch off your setback. He's about to switch off your pain. And your shame in the name of Jesus. Let me quickly explain this. Assuming you have a laptop. You know some of us have laptops. And that laptop, the battery is bad. Can you hear me now? The battery of your laptop is bad. And you know for a battery, a laptop that has a bad battery. Or a battery that can't power it for so long. What do you do? What do you do? You must connect it to what? A source of power. Anytime you disconnect it from that source of power, what will happen? It will go off, right? Now, imagine you have a presentation to make. A live presentation that will give you multi before investors. That will give you millions of dollars. Or you have an interview to be the CEO of a company. And they want to interview you. And then this is the laptop you have. The weakness of your laptop is that what? The battery life is gone. You've not been able to replace it. It's a weakness. And so you turn it on to that source of what? You connect it to that source of what? Electricity. And then in the middle of your presentation, Nepa takes light and bring it. What will you do? <laughs> well, no, no, no. Will you stay there? Will you stay there? That is a weakness. Nepa takes light. You go blank. They bring lights. You try to power on. What will you do? And then right in the middle of that struggle, you didn't have a generator around. And somebody went quickly to go and get a generator. Turn off what? The neighbor. Turn on the power source, the generator. And connect your lap, your electricity source to that generator. What will you, how will you feel? You will feel settled. You will no longer be apprehensive, isn't it? Because you know this power that has come. That generator is full. Everything you need it to take you throughout the presentation. That is what the hand of God does. He switches off your weakness. He switches off the nepa in your life. That nepa that go on and off. That make you rise today. For tomorrow. Rise today. For tomorrow. And switch you on to a power source that is too forceful. A power source that 
rain in the day, in the night. Come rain, come sunshine. It is sure to provide energy, to provide power, to provide strength. From today, God is taking over your strength. The strength of God is taking over your weaknesses. I, I don't see your weakness anymore. Tell your neighbor, I don't see my weakness anymore. What was your weakness? What was your weakness? Oh, you didn't answer. I said, what was your weakness? I didn't say, what is your weakness? Did you hear me? I said, what was? Your weakness is over. That thing that has made you fail is over. That weakness is being turned over to God. And he has connected you to his source of strength. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, That they that wait upon the Lord, they shall what? Renew their strength. Like what? The eagle, they shall run. They will not what? They shall walk. They will not be. They are not walking with their own strength. They are walking with the eternal strength of the higher than the highest, of the greater than the greatest, of the I am that I am. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it said, if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead we revitalize your body. We quicken your body. We give life to your body. We give strength to your body. We give energy to your body, your weakness becomes your strength, your greatest weakness becomes your greatest strength, why? there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the highest giveth him life, today that inspiration is coming upon you it is coming upon you it is coming upon you, it is coming upon your home, if you believe it rise and shout hallelujah come on give Jesus a big hand this morning, give him a big hand give him a big hand <laughs> I have good news for you. The Holy Ghost is revitalizing the pace of your life. He's revitalizing the pace of your system. Revitalizing the pace of your body. Anything that is no longer useful in your body, the Holy Ghost is revitalizing them. He's giving life back to them. Even this morning in the name of Jesus. Some of you say you have bad pain. Bad pain is leaving you right now. Come on, I said that pain is leaving you. Some of you say, oh, there is something wrong with your stomach. It is leaving you this money. Something wrong with your womb is leaving you. Something wrong with your loins is leaving you. Something wrong with your brain is leaving you. Things are changing for you. Come on, shout hallelujah, church. If I were you, I would give Jesus a big and a shout hallelujah. When, finally, I will stop here. I'm not sure I can finish. I have three points. Oh, when, when God's hand is upon a man, the following three things will happen. But I'm going to stop. This is where I will stop, but I will just start. What is the first thing that will happen when God's hand is upon you? <laughs> he gives you divine grace for uncommon speed. He gives you divine grace. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 10. Apostle Paul said, I am the least of the disciples. I never met Christ. But nevertheless, God made me what? Now let's read together. First Corinthians chapter, chapter uh, 15 verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. Then I'm not what? I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of Christ or of God. Can we use Amplify, please? I like Amplify. The way Amplify put it. Please, let's quickly. Let's be quick. Okay. For I'm the least worthy of the apostles who are not fit or deserving to be called an apostle because I once wronged and pursued and molested the church of God oppressing it with cruelty and violence. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, but by the grace of God, <laughs> I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not found to be nothing, fruitless without effort. In fact, I worked harder than all of them. Even the apostles, though it was not really I that was working, but grace was working in me. Listen to me, somebody. Grace will begin to work up for you today. From today, grace will work for you. Your new name will become Sister Grace. Is your grace in the house? You are grace, but we are brother grace. There are new sister Grace in this house. Your new name is Grace. Everywhere you go, you go carry Grace. And Grace will carry you. You carry Grace and Grace will carry you. Come on, shout hallelujah. Let me tell you something about Grace. When Grace is upon your life, when you enter the race, does not matter. What matters is you automatically become the front runner. Hey, when they are looking for people, people are loving for a position and you are not interested. 
When grace is upon you, the day you are interested, you become the front runner. You know why? Grace take you from the list and make you the front runner. There are people hearing the sound of my voice today. Grace is about to jump the queue for you. Grace will make you jump the queue. Grace will make you jump the queue. I want to experience something. You're on the queue. You want to buy, you want to do something. And then somebody just say, you are at the back. Come here. At times, they will just look at the line and say, we cut off from here. All of you from here, follow me. I've experienced it before. They just say, from here, follow me. And they go and give you special treatment. Listen to me. Grace is about to open doors for you. Grace is about to celebrate you. Grace is about to give you a shortcut. Come on, shout hallelujah, somebody. When you enter the race, it does not matter. Because when grace is by your side, and when grace is working for you, you become the front runner, though you were the last person. A sister once said that, look, there was a position that was open. I mean, it was on Wednesday she shared it in India. And the person said, I wanted a multiracial team, people from different parts of the world. And then as they were talking, they were asking, who can they get? And then suddenly, somebody mentioned her name and said, look, there is this sister. She works in Nigeria office. Can we get her on board? And then that is how she came on board. Listen to me. Grace has a voice. The voice of grace will speak for you. Hey, you didn't hear me. The voice of grace will speak for you. When they need someone, grace will be there to speak for you. Where you cannot go, grace can get. Where you cannot get, to, grace can get there. Blessings you cannot be, grace can be there. When they ask after you, grace will be speaking for you. Grace will talk on your behalf. In fact, it will happen that when men say, no, we don't want her, grace will say, the more they speak against you, the more grace will speak louder. No man can shut the voice of grace. No man can shut the voice of grace. If they could not shut the voice of grace in the time of Jesus, when it had to do with blind Bartimaeus, they said, shut up. Who are you, blind man? But the more they shut him down, the more he shouted. Listen to me. The more they shut grace down in your life, the more grace... The the more they hear grace, the more they hear the voice of grace. Grace will work for you. Grace will appear for you. Grace will fight for you. Grace will talk for you. Grace will work for you. Grace will lead for you. Grace will go everywhere for you. Where you can go, grace will go. Where you can be, grace will be. Where you can walk, grace will walk. Come on, shout hallelujah. Grace. Ay, 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 ay. Listen to me. You can't, you can't have God's grace and struggle in the race of life. Why? Grace eliminates struggles. Grace fast track your pace. Ah, grace gives you a leap in life. Psalm 40 verse 2 to 4. Grace. He said, he lifted me up out of the mighty clay and set my feet upon the rock to stay. What was the lifter? Grace was the one that lifted you out of the mighty clay. Grace will lift you out of the mighty clay today and set your feet upon the rock to stay. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. When the vehicle of grace gives you a lift in life, it will stop until you get to your destination. When the vehicle of grace gives you a lift in life, it will not stop until you get to your destination. When grace carries you, nobody can stop you. When grace name you, nobody can rename you. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Grace name you, Olorida. Oh, nobody can name you a wrong name. <laughs> Is it Olorida? Oh, good dead, good dead, right? Eh? Olorire. Oh, if grace say you are Olorire, nobody can call you Olori Buruku. If they try it, they will carry their load. Ah, listen to me. If they have called you Olori Buruku, tell them, I have grace. Grace has named me. What did grace name you? You are the head and not the tail. You are the first, you are not the last. You are above only, you are not beneath. You shall be ahead all the days of your life. What grace names, no man can rename. No shame can rename. No shame can delete. If you believe, why not rise and shout hallelujah? Grace, 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 grace. Listen to me. <laughs> when grace lifts you, no shame can pull you down. We are going higher. Ah, there's this song that says, it said we are going higher every day. No more limitations. We are taking over higher every day. We are going higher every day. Look at your neighbor and sing it. Come on. I just read this song. That's how I sing. Come on, sing it. Let's choir. 
To me, <laughs> you can't have grace and experience disgrace. It's impossible. Grace and disgrace cannot stay in the same house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The house you say is engraced. And so disgrace cannot come. You know why? The one at the door of your house is grace. How can grace let disgrace enter? The door of grace is open. No door of disgrace can be open at the same time. Come on, shout hallelujah, somebody. Ah, listen to me, listen to me. When you encounter grace, listen, grace is always sufficient. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you encounter grace, you're on a life cruise. You enter a life cruise, powered by the supernatural power of God. The day you encounter grace, you enter a life cruise. Some of us have never entered life cruise before, but there is a spiritual life cruise that grace provides. Today you are entering that life cruise. And when you enter that life cruise, it is powered by the Holy Ghost. Nothing can stop you anymore. In the name of Jesus. Listen, <laughs> listen to this. Grace can carry you everywhere you want to go. Everywhere and anywhere. Wherever you decide to go, grace is able to carry you. Ah, listen. As I was thinking about this, the Lord made me to understand every kingdom has, a, has, what, has what they call a national carrier. Right? Uh, hello, are you with me? The kingdom of uh, Saudi Arabia has a national carrier. The kingdom of uh, the, uh, uh, UAE, right? They have a national, they have Emirates, they have Etihad, right? Every kingdom has a national carrier. We have our own national carrier. The national carrier of the kingdom of light is grace. Grace is a spiritual carrier. It's a spiritual flight. It's the carrier that we know. And do you know what? Grace is our divine intercontinental carrier airline. And this airline is invisible. It can take you anywhere. Now listen, salvation is the passport through which you, what, you enter this airline. Every airline, you must show your passport. Whether you are a citizen or you are not a citizen, you must show your passport. Salvation is the passport. Number two, <laughs> you know what? Eternal life is the visa on your passport. That passport you carry in the cruise called grace as what? Salvation as, his, as what? Salvation is his what? Passport. And what? What is his visa? What is the visa? Eternal life is the visa. And then, do you know your ticket? Your ticket is called faith. Your ticket is faith. That is the ticket with which you determine which city you will stay. In that airline, the, your level of faith determines the city you will stay. If you are in first class, you have first class faith. If you are in lower cabin, you have lower cabin faith. But I'm telling you this morning, your faith will increase. Your faith will increase in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. The angels of God, they are what the air hostess. They are the air hostess. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, are there no ministering spirit called to minister to them that shall be called what? The hell of what? Of salvation. The angels are the what? They are the flight attendants. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Who is the pilot? The Holy Spirit. He is the one piloting this air called grace. Grace airline, grace carrier, the intercontinental world airline that can take you to any destination. And do you know what today? This airline is about to go. It's about to zoom off this money. And when it takes off, anywhere you want to go on this earth, it will take you there. Anywhere you desire to go, it will take you there. Why did I not talk about the destination? There are several destinations. Several destinations that this airline can take you to. The ultimate destination is heaven. But every time as this grace airline is moving, anywhere you want to stop and have a nice time, it can take you there. Do you want to go to America? Grace can take you there. Anywhere you want to go upon the head, grace is not restricted. Grace is not a local flight. It's an intercontinental flight. It's an interterrestrial flight. It's a flight that can take you anywhere on earth. It's a flight that can take you to heaven. No man can stop this flight because the one, the, the flight attendants are the angels. The pilot itself is what? The Holy Spirit. The 
co-pilot. Who is the co-pilot? The Lord Jesus Christ is the co-pilot with the Holy Ghost. They are the ones on this cruise. And I want to tell you this morning, as you step into this airline, God grace, or this aircraft, God grace, you will get to your destination. You will get to wherever you want to get to. In the name of Jesus, I do not have time. I do not have time. But I'm telling you this morning, God says, I have an aircraft that I prepared for you. This aircraft, you are no longer going to be what? Going to be working. You are about to start flying. Like I told you that last week. But you never knew the airline you were going to fly on. And he said, I should tell you today, there is a new airline in town. Tell your neighbor, there's a new airline in town. I have found a new airline. I have found a new airline. My new airline is what? What's the name? It is not Nigeria here that we can't find. Hey, <laughs> it's not Nigeria here that they painted. No man can paint this airline. This airline is painted by God. This airline is prepared by God. This airline is made by God. And the airline is about to take off. To take you to wherever you want to be. Listen to me this morning. This grace is here this morning. And it's ready to take you to wherever destination you want to get to. Whoever you are, wherever you are, no matter your name, this airline will take you. Just have your passport. Just have your ticket. Just have your passport. Have your ticket. Have your visa. And you are ready to go. I so you are ready to go. How many are ready to go with Grace Airline? I'm ready to go with Grace Airline. Where do you want to get to? Holy Ghost, carry me. Carry me the go. Carry me the go. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your hand. Call upon Jesus. Where do you want to be? Holy Ghost, carry me the go. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, church, pray. I need that to end it there for time. Holy Ghost, carry me the go. Holy Ghost, carry me the go. Yeah, da, 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 sorry, it is pitching. Carry me, carry me. Grace, 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 carry me. My yeah, da, 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 da. Thank you, Father. Just, brethren, before we continue, all is bow, all eyes close. Do you know? Listen to me. God wants to hold you. You need that passport of salvation. Is there someone who needs that passport in the house? All eyes bow, all eyes close. You don't have that passport. You can't enter this airline. Anyone that wants to enter this airline, just wait. Just lift up your hands as I count three. If you are ready to join this airline. You are ready to give your life to Jesus. So you can join this airline. One. Any other person? Two. The third time? Three. Okay, there's no other person. We are going to worship God now. So he will touch us. God is about to touch you. He's about to touch you in a special way. Just let's lift up your hands. I'm not going to touch you. In the next few minutes, God is about to touch you. Unfortunately, the rain prevented some people from coming. But wherever you are, you are online. And if you are here this morning, grace is about to touch you. The spiritual airline is open. And let's just have an encounter with the spirit of life. Come on. We give you glory, Jesus. Just raise your hands up and just say, Father, we worship. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Just raise your hands up and say, you are worthy.
of the Lord is here. The presence is here. The presence is here. My just, just, just concentrate on the spirit. Just concentrate on the spirit. Thank you, Father. Just lift up your hands. Let the Lord alone touch you. Soak in this atmosphere. This atmosphere. Everybody that can speak in tongues, you have two, three minutes. Just speak in tongues, everybody. Just begin to speak in tongues. <laughs> Let everyone be silent in a minute. Just lift up your hands for time. Just let it go. There is an atmosphere created here already. Look at us, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just lay your hands on your head. There's no time. I'm just going to pray. But you are going to have the encounter. Let the Lord, let the Lord. I can see the move of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Upon everyone. Upon every man. Upon every male, upon every female, upon everyone, upon everyone, the auction of your power, the auction, the auction for common speed. Some of you are beginning to receive your hands. There is a sign, there is a sign, there is a sign. Some of you on your foreheads. Lord, 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 move. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The wind blow. Holy Spirit, let everyone encounter you. Shapalo Proto Santu Labuta Yegade. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Come and let's give Jesus a big hand for this time. Please, if you've given your tithe for time, I had to stop. Please, if you've given your tithe or you have your tithe, please just come forward quickly. The rest of us prepare your offerings. You have the blue envelope and the burgundy envelope is for your Sunday love offering and then your burgundy envelope for your project offering, your project offering, the champion's planet offering to support the work 
Some people are still drunk, drunk in the spirit. Just let God. And if you bring it, if you brought in your tithe, please just come forward. Lord, behold your children. As they bring their tithe, please accept them and accept their tithe. Let it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And cover them with the blood of Jesus. Make their profit or income from which they pay this tithe to become their tithe itself in Jesus' name. Lord, bless and replenish everything about them. Lift them up that very soon their lives will never be the same again. Lord, let them encounter you. Or come of financial speed in Jesus' name we pray. The rest of us, prepare your offerings. I bless your offerings. The Lord himself, especially touch your offerings and lift you up on every side. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Choir, let's be fast. It's going to be very brief. Wrapping up in five minutes. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous, He said to do marvelous things. for details of the online and she will share with you uh, but you can see the addresses here online uh, evangelism holds on saturday by 9 a.m is for all workers and but to be led by brothers brothers uh, to be led by the youths and the men let me just put it that way all young adults and youths and the men We've been mobilizing us. We have to join them 9 a.m. So most of us have not been coming for evangelism. 
there's a lot we are losing by not coming for evangelism. Um, all youths to see me after the second service. Uh, it's likely I may have to move this, but I will only see you within two, three minutes. But otherwise, I may have to move it. I have to almost leave immediately. Um, likewise, all former youth schools, it will just be briefly, maybe three minutes meeting. We can meet uh, next time to finalize other things. Uh, you can visit, reach out to friends and loved ones as you look around, those who couldn't make it to church today. They may just need your call. Believers class us immediately after this second service. And I'm sure there are those who are fellowshipping with us for the first time. Who are those that are fellowshipping with us for the very, this is your first Sunday with us? Just wave your hands. I want to welcome you. I want to celebrate you. I welcome you in the TOG way. Anyone like that, just wave your hands. We want to celebrate you. Anybody? No one in the same. Come on. There's a sister there. Come on. God bless you. You're welcome. Come on. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Everything you came with. the Lord. This house is the throne of grace. God is everywhere, especially here. At the throne of grace, we help people discover purpose. We help them fulfill dreams. Above all, we raise champions. This is the only place on earth where everyone is a champion. That is why we christen ourselves the champion's planet. So you want to be a champion? This is the best place to be. And I want to assure you, in three to six months, God will turn your life around for the very best in Jesus' name. And I decree that upon you that if you want to continue to ask, you continue to fellowship with us, the grace of God will come upon you that will turn things around for you. You will enter that flight, the flight of grace, and it will carry you to wherever you want to be in life and destiny. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Shall we celebrate them as they join our sisters? Our sisters, they just join them. They will interact with you and show you how hospitable we are. Uh, are we ready to close the service? Let's rise to our, self, our feet as we bring this service to a close. But before then, please rise to your feet while you are rising. I'll make this. Uh, brother, our uh, brother, brother Ubong Ibanga Peter and sister Insong Gurua Eno Oduete. Oduete, right? Their wedding comes up. want to go. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the excellent fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shall we make our declaration? Be intentional, please. Don't rush it, but say it intentionally and with intensity, because this will be your story at the end of this year. So read the story very well. Is that okay? Read your story aloud, but read it very well. Want to go? 2024 is my year of uncommon manifestation in life and destiny. I'm an embodiment of gospel. I thrive where others struggle, soar where others sing, and fly where others fail. Total restoration is my portion. I will pursue, overtake, and recover all I've ever lost in life and destiny. My greatness is unrestricted, and my influence is unlimited. The word of God is my escalator, and the Holy Spirit is my enabler. I walk in dominion and operate with uncommon grace, favor, and wisdom. I'm insulated from sicknesses, hardships, plagues, and shame. The word is waiting for my manifestation.
manifestation and I will make an uncommon difference in my generation in Jesus' name. Now look at a lovely neighbor by your side. If the person is not lovely, look for a lovely neighbor. Now do you have the neighbor by your side smiling to you? Some people don't have neighbors. Praise the Lord. Maybe you make that, you make this smile your neighbor. You make this smile your neighbor. Praise the Lord. All right. Now let's say it. This is my declaration. This is my year. Have a very blessed and a fulfilling week ahead. God bless you. Be with you. Keep you and lead you all the way. God bless you all.